Living Word Christian Center. We're going to have a we're going to have a great time. All right, let me welcome uh, the panel tonight: Dutch Sheets, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, and Tony Suarez. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Pastor Tony Suarez. So uh, that was your Flashpoint Live. What did you think in Pensacola? It was everything I hoped for. It was just an incredible move of God. God met us in such a special way. I was only able to attend Friday, but I'm telling you, if you could, if you could only be there one day, it was it was everything. And now we just go from glory to glory. Every event gets better. I actually I attended the first one in Tulsa, right. and uh, that was a great move of God. But it just seems like there's a stronger anointing over every event, and that's just going to keep happening as the tour goes on. I agree with, I agree. Uh, Dutch is those uh, at home. Uh, Dutch did show up. Dutch, what'd you think of, uh, um, thank you for coming, but tell me what you felt uh, as you left Pensacola there about the meeting. Agree with Tony completely. I think it's the best one yet. And uh, the presence of the Lord was very, very strong. The teaching throughout the day, Friday, that uh, I, I was there for half a day, outstanding. The people were engaged. The uh, the worship was powerful. Even even at the end, the worship team came up, and it just would take things to another level. It was awesome. These gatherings are going to keep getting stronger and stronger, better and better, and they're being used by God in very strategic ways. Gene, you're doing yeah. a great job with it. Well, thank you. I, I mean, it's Holy Spirit's the best uh, event producer ever. Um, uh, Pastor Hank, you've been in all, every one of them. Uh, what did you think about Pensacola? Well, I love Pensacola. I, I love the beach that I never got to go to, Pastor Gene. So I think we need to go back so I, I could so. not only have a meeting. But what I loved about it is, you know, Exodus 34, Moses said something. It was almost like he was saying, God, I am not going to go there unless your presence goes with us. And really, that was the heart of all of us is God, you know, we're going there, but we have got to have your presence. And I tell you, there was no disappointment. I watched people weep. I saw people shake. I saw others pour out their heart to God. And the Lord began to move by his spirit, healing people. And I tell you, there was a visible, tangible touch of God himself in that room. And we learned something in Mark chapter five with the woman with the issue of blood that she had 12 years of issues that one touch from Jesus erased all those years. And I tell you, people's lives were touched, Pastor Gene. And I think that uh, something my wife said lastly, you know, Flashpoint is a revival. It's a movement. And yeah. what I love about it is not only is it addressing things in our nation, but it's also ministering to God and also ministering to people. And it's beautiful. And I'm watching such a, 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 a favor of God on it. So thank you for allowing us to be a part. And I can't wait for the next one. No, me too. I, I woke up this morning thinking, okay, let's, when's yeah. the next one? When's the next one? When's the next one? Uh, right now, it's Nashville, May 11 and 12th, but, so make sure you join us there. But listen, if you weren't there, I want to show you a quick recap. This is just of Thursday night, the first night. Watch this. Wow, Dutch, you get me all pumped up all over again. Man, that was good. Uh, wow, that was just Thursday night. I was looking at everybody that was there. It was amazing. We got, Everybody got a chance to talk. And we had pastors there. And boy, special shout out to Pastor Evan Horton there, Brownsville Church, Pensacola. They just rolled out the red carpet for us and let us. We pretty much took over the building and redid it and lit it. And boy, it was just amazing. So thank you again, Pastor Horton and your staff for all that you did for Flashpoint Live to come to your building. It was amazing. Now, the thing I was expecting, I was not sure what was going to happen on Friday because we've been talking about these Flash Talks and what they were going to be, and I just didn't know how many people would show up. Would they stay? Would they leave? Was it going to meet the needs of the people? I'm telling you, it really, really did. And, and Dutch, you were a late addition there. There's Lee talking. But Dutch, what did you think? Uh, you know, the response to your session was absolutely amazing. Well, I appreciate it. I think it was, I'm sure it's the same response to all of them, Gene. The people, they are so engaged. They are so hungry. Uh, and it doesn't matter where Holy Spirit takes the meetings. You know, the night before when we when it, it was so intense with this passion and this going after a revival, they were so engaged. But the next day when we were teaching them, they were like 1,500, whatever it was, sponges, soaking it up, pulling it out of us. And I spoke on awakening and reformation, why we need to, to have Mark 16 revival. 
right. people saved, delivered, healed. And Matthew 28, disciple nations. I tell you, they were with me no matter which direction. They were ready. They want to know. They want to hear. I thought it was just tremendous, just absolutely wonderful. It was so much. Pastor Hank, you spoke as well there. Lance, by the way, is not with us tonight. He's traveling, so he couldn't be on. And I know he had a great session as well about the seven mountains and the gates. It's kind of like I need to go back and listen to him just to hear what he had to say again. Um, see, that was a compliment. I complimented Lance, and he's not <laughs> even here. Uh, Pastor Hank, uh, tell me what you, th what you thought uh, on Friday during your session. Well, you can always feel the pull that comes out of, of your, your spirit when hungry people are present. And as I was trying to do my, my flash talk there, I could feel the pull from the people. They were so hungry. They were like, man, we want to know how to be better equipped. But what we're hungry for is we want impartation. And I think what was really amazing about the, this get session that I had the privilege of doing is people were really engaged. I mean, they are at the point where they're saying, like David, you know what? Goliath has been shooting off his mouth. There's been a lot of frightening moments in the last few years that we've experienced as a people, but God has not forsaken us. And he's raising us up with the spirit of David to literally stand for God and to stand for our country. And I saw a room full of people that not only are willing to do that, but they're saying, please tell us how, show us more. And we want to go in the spirit and the might of almighty God. Amen. And that was the beautiful part of it is just seeing from that the people was. how hungry they were and how much they are taking it serious that they're not going to let America get away from them. America shall be saved, it like Dutch be. says. That's right. And, and I, I was absolutely um, impressed with how many people stayed all day long and then they didn't leave. They stayed right there to hold their seats. So they'd have a seat for the night service. And what a service we had. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that service in the second half of Flashpoint tonight. I need to move along. But I want to make sure you know about the next event is May 11 and 12 in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, May 11 and 12. You see it right there. Uh, we'll be at Cornerstone, Nashville. They've opened up their church to us. And so you can find out more information. Go to govictory.com slash FP live. That's FP live and find out how to register. Every event is free, ladies and gentlemen. We are not charging for these events. Uh, we do take up an offering to help with the, with the cost of that. But you will see all the events that we have, the whole schedule for this year as it is right now, including Minneapolis is right there. You can register and let us know you're coming. People are signing up in droves. I think a lot of people were waiting to see how Pensacola was going to go. And listen, I am so excited about the next event. This is the new thing. Flashpoint Live is not the same as it was last year. We're going to the next level. Thank you, Jesus. We're doing the work. So many people and Rick Green and Lee Wamsgans as well. They And of course, uh, Rick and Rob McCoy had a great session there. I don't think there was, I had so many compliments. The next day, gentlemen, I had calls from Russia. I had calls all over uh, the United States as well, calling me to say how much they enjoyed wow. watching. So amazing, amazing event. So join us in Nashville or any of the other events. All right, well, let's get on to a little bit of today's news. Uh, yesterday was President's Day, but not everyone was here in America celebrating President's Day. Watch this. We begin tonight with President Biden's secret and historic trip into Ukraine, a daring act by a sitting president visiting a war zone and one where no American troops are serving. The journey planned in secrecy and unannounced playing out in the overnight hours, and it comes just as the world is set to witness the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Chris, I think it's historic. Uh, it's like when JFK went to Berlin in 1963 when Ronald Reagan went to West Berlin in 1987 and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear, tear down this wall, it sent a powerful message, a powerful message to Moscow that we are there to, to stay, a powerful message to our European NATO allies that were there, that an American president went into a war zone without American troops on the ground. I think it's powerful. And, um, and I think we do have to stay the course. Um, it's not just symbolism, it's actions. And when he's going to Poland, He's supporting a NATO ally that hosts more Ukrainian refugees than any other country, several million. And the, the polls have been incredibly generous. And I think the American people need to be generous back. So, Mike, I was reading an article written before this visit happened, and basically it said that a lot of aides were worried. They did not want the president to go to. All right. So you see, it was historic, gentlemen. Pastor Hank, it was historic. It was it was like Reagan. 
Um, I'm not sure I'd say historic. Not everyone felt the same way. Oh, come on, man. Really? Blah, blah, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. What are you doing on President's Day going over to Ukraine when most people don't know what in the world are we doing in Ukraine? Why are we backing Ukraine? I'm not saying that, you know, that's against the uh, the Ukrainian people, but what are we doing there? What's the purpose? And by the way, what's this laptop that is linked to Ukraine, Mr. Biden? What about your son and all the dealings and the money laundering and the handshaking? And why are you involved? And why did you feel like on President's Day when you should be standing for the people of the United States of America that you had a secret mission supposedly you were there all right some doesn't add up how about president trump you want to talk about a real hero don't you remember when he went i believe it was on christmas day and he flew over and visited the people that are really fighting for this country the american soldiers and he always put president trump america first not this fake administration. So I think we ought to be outraged. And uh, it's amazing how the fake news is doing a great job of trying to make it look like this superhero mission. You know, I'm waiting for, you know, Biden to peel open his shirt and have SB super Biden or something. I don't see it heroic at all. And I really, I, I don't watch the news, but I'm wondering what's the purpose of it? What did it solve? And why did you need to feel like you had to do it? Well, so we're, gonna, we're not getting that. Yeah, we'll come back to a little bit of that. What is What was it for? But I want you to watch all this. All right, I want to know. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to show you what it was. But before I want you to see, as we all know, the trains that derailed in East Palestine, uh, Ohio, listen to what he had to say about President's Day. You know? Yeah, I think, I think he has to prove himself to you. And, and, Mayor, before we let you go, you saw President Joe Biden over in Ukraine. Uh, did that make you feel uh, slighted in any way? I mean, he hasn't really... Can he not hear me? I got well, you, Trent. He let, asked, let me, it, uh, you know, before we go, I, I can repeat, he said, with the president being in U- Ukraine today, you know, did that surprise you? Absolutely. That was the biggest slap in the face. That tells you right now he doesn't care about us. So Agreed. Uh, he can send every agency he wants to. But uh, I found that out this morning in one of the briefings that he was in the Ukraine giving millions of dollars away to people over there and not to us. And I'm furious. On so, President's Day in yeah, our country. Yeah, President's Day in our country. He's, he's uh, over in Ukraine, so. That tells you what kind of guy he is. All right. Well, listen, you two hang in there. Please let us know if we can do anything. And I'm glad you're holding Alan yes, Shaw's sir. feet to the fire. Hang in there, guys. Thank All right. You. So you, you saw that what was happening there with the mayor of East Palestine. Um, but Dutch, it's not over yet. I'm going to come to you out of this. I want you to see this is to answer Pastor Hank's question. What was it for? So air raid si- sirens were blaring through a photo op. Watch this. All right, so, uh, gentlemen, when I see this, usually when you hear an air raid siren, it means to go take cover, get in the shelter. If you've ever been in Jerusalem or Israel, when something goes out, everybody scrambles and goes for a shelter. Not so. They seem to be very, very calm about it all. Look at what CNN had to say about the truth out loud. Watch. Um, I've been here for the past five days. I have not heard any explosions. I have not heard any air sirens until about half an hour ago, right when uh, President Biden was in the center of Kiev, as as Clarissa was was just mentioning. All right. So, Dutch, there you see it. Uh, Air raid sirens went up, but there hasn't been any explosions. It's possible. I'm not saying I know for sure, but it's very possible this was something for the cameras. It's so obvious that it was staged. This is a perfect example of fake news. But they're doing this to prop this man up, they're trying to demonstrate that he's strong, that he's, that he's a, a player and a strong player on the world stage. We all know the opposite is true. He's a laughing stock. And to compare this man to Ronald Reagan is one of the most uh, egregious, uh, outlandish statements that could have ever been made. For, that, for Ronald Reagan to stand boldly 
in the face of tyranny, in the face of Gorbachev, and see what he did was truly historic. For this man to stage an op and have the, the fake siren is a is is it's a laughing it's a it's no wonder we're a laughing stock. And the people of Palestine they should be infuriated. No one from the government that no one has demonstrated they care about these people. And for him to go uh, and do this and is a slap in the face to them. It's disgusting and it's disgrace, disgraceful. But they have to do anything they can to try to make this man look strong and like he knows what he's doing, which he does not. Tony Suarez, uh, you heard Dutch's uh, evaluation and you heard Pastor Hank. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think it was uh, just something to be staged? Uh, absolutely. And we need to raise our voice to make sure it's said, because a few years ago, when there was an attack on our country, we had a president that went outside and stood with the word of God and was attacked, including by religious media, Christian media that said, no, that's that's just a photo op. And I said, you know, people were throwing rocks and bottles, but there was a man that would stand with the word of God. This this is a true photo op. And what we're seeing even by him going to the Ukraine, is just another example of how we've lost the culture of honor that used to exist in this country. It was President's Day. I live in the Bible Belt. I live in Tennessee. My kids weren't even off of school on President's Day. That would have been unheard of when I was a child because we were honoring the presidents that had served in that office and served our nation. There was a time in our history where we honored presidents and honored the office so much that uh, when Franklin Roosevelt was president, they say that the media would not even turn their cameras on until his staff, uh, his aides had stood him up behind the podium. Most of the nation didn't even know he was in a wheelchair because they honored the office. Uh, fast forward that to where we are today. There's just no honor and going to the Ukraine on President's Day, not giving children off to to celebrate. It's, it's, it's just disappointing to... To know to, to to know that we've gotten to such a place. Yeah, it is disappointing. You know, Pastor Hank, uh, I'll come back to you on this. The the reality is, whether it was staged or not, Americans are responding today as they did yesterday. And you heard the mayor; they're upset um, that that we're, we've got explosions. There was one today, even in Nebraska. Uh, yeah, right. that happened, near, I mean, a couple hours, I think, away from you, mm -hmm. uh, as well as more in Chicago, Ohio. Right. Uh, this will generate a lot of people in the nation are in fear. And so that's mm -hmm. the whole point I want to set this up for. You've got the fear of what is going on on these trains. We're seeing the, the shots of the water with stuff in the water and them not getting help, not getting um, uh, those residents not getting help from the government yet. Uh, at the same time, we're hearing of other explosions, and then we see Joe Biden in another country shaking hands with, at, l at the very best, it's a suspicious war with Ukraine and Russia. And I'll, I'll, I don't want to get into that, but you know what I'm saying. But Pastor Hank, this can totally, totally undermine you yeah. if you're not rooted and grounded in God's word and the faith of our fathers as well as faith in the word but how do we how do we live in this and try to disseminate what's right what's wrong how to be in fear how to be in faith how do we do that well, first of all, gee, you know, the scripture talks about that uh, fear is a spirit. So it has an evil entity, a spirit beings behind it. And so when we sit there and listen and let that stuff get into our hearts, uh, a lot of times we then have evil spirits that take it to the next level. And then we begin to have panic attacks, anxiety, and fear. But Jesus said something very powerful in Luke chapter 21. And he said around verse 26, that men's hearts would fail them for fear. Why? Because of the things that they see or they're looking at in the earth. And then he goes on and he begins to say that we're to look up because our redemption draweth nigh. In other words, the King is coming again. And that is part of the hope that we live for. But watch this. There's also God operates in the earth by he always has a redemptive plan as long as the Holy Spirit is in the earth. And a redemptive plan is God's plan of help and hope. Let me give you a quick example. You know, a couple of years ago, the Spirit of the Lord prophesied and said there would be derailments. And he said that they would go after our water. They would go after the fish. They would go after the chickens. Come on, look at the eggs. Look at what's happened in Ohio with the chickens. They go after the cattle. This is stuff that's been prophesied ahead of time. And he said, but 
know this, that I'm going to bless your bread and I'm going to bless your water, America, even though they're going to try to do this. And the derailments will be a sign that I'm going to derail the agenda of hell. And there's a, there's a saying that God shed his grace um, uh, upon the America. And I believe this, as I've been before the Lord uh, in his throne room, he keeps saying to me things that I'm hearing and I'm seeing and I'm declaring that we're watching. For example, the meteorites that are happening in the sky. God said that this would, would happen and, and there would be things with satellites and lasers that we're seeing. But it causes men to fear if they don't look up and fear God. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, Hank, tell the people, the more they keep trying to steal, kill and destroy this country, the greater I'm going to release my anointing of preservation. And the anointing of preservation is eight times in the book of John, they tried to kill Jesus, but they couldn't because something was preserving him and it was the spirit of God. Lastly, God, the more they do this, he's going to shed or pour out his grace upon us. And I tell you, we are going to see the goodness of God. And, and the Lord said he's pulling the covers off. He's going to take off the mask. He's going to pull the curtains over and he is going to stop this nonsense. And he's going to show us what really is going on. So those of you that might be in fear, Continue to trust in the Lord your God because we are in the time of the finger of God that is going to expose all things and reset this thing with his divine touch that is coming upon our nation. So be encouraged. Amen. All right. So listen, we take this. The whole reason for that whole segment was for you to understand, number one, things are not as you think they are always. There's a lot of hidden agendas. There's a lot of photo ops, and that's been going on for decades, okay, on both sides of the aisle. But you are more alert and more awake than ever, so this isn't getting by you anymore. Even CNN is expo is exposing it now, which I, we all know that's a miracle. And so we're seeing some things happen now. So we have to keep our, keep our faith engaged, keep pressing towards the mark. But here's your part. Your part is to make sure you just don't let that go by. You need to expose it. You say, well, how do I expose that? Say something on social media. Share with your friends. Share what you've got to do. Until we rise up. I love what, um, you know, Tony, I like what uh, Sammy Rodriguez says. You know, the church is waiting for God to pour out revival, and he's waiting for the church to rise up. That's exactly where we are. We need to rise up and say, no, we are not going to accept this bogus news report. We're not going to accept a bogus trip that is not okay. What goes on in America is important. You are in the office of president. No matter how you got there, you're sitting there in it. Act like it. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back. We're going to take a little more time talking about what God's doing in revival in our nation and also the men who suffer from abortion. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 